Hello, I'm Rachel. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a couple of pretty cool things for my garden. At least I think it's pretty cool because we're going to be making some grow bags out of some landscaping fabric, the really heavy duty kind. My husband wants to plant potatoes and things in them and he doesn't want to pay full price so instead I get to make them. <laughs> and then the other project that I'm going to be working on is a cover for my cushion outside. So I'm just going to be sewing some batting kind of around it to keep it together <laughs> so that way I can remove the cover whenever I want to and I can wash it. I'm going to be making the cover. My plan is to make it kind of how I like to make my pillows where the back they just fold over each other so you can just stuff the pillow in it and you don't have to worry about any buttons or anything or any zippers and I think it probably would be easier to make this cushion work if I did have a zipper, but I don't want to sew a zipper. I'm just going to be doing a folded thing just in the back part and that way hopefully it'll work. <laughs> and if it doesn't work very well then I'll just spray it with like some never wet because we have some left over from my husband spraying his shoes a while ago. <laughs> and I'm going to be using some drop cloth on it. I've already pre-shrunk it. I washed it on my highest setting in my washer and dried it on my highest setting in my dryer just so that way it's completely pre-shrunk and I don't have to worry about any elements shrinking it anymore. Although it is underneath my patio and it gets zero sun to it so that's not anything that I really have to worry about. Um, so my couch though, our, our outdoor couch, my husband and I made it in about an afternoon uh, last early fall and we use the same basic kind of like you look up outdoor couch DIY on Pinterest and this is what comes up so I will put that in the description box below um, I guess we'll get to this video I'm not going to be showing you a full patio makeover anytime soon because I want to wait until later in May so that way I can show you it with flowers everywhere here it gets a little bit too cold still until um, you know, mid to late May for certain kinds of flowers that I just like to have on my patio because it just makes my patio so much more beautiful and yeah, that way I have lots of time to do whatever else I want to do. So anyways, let's get to sewing. I am measuring out my fabric. My fabric is the correct width that I want it to be for a five gallon container. It's about 30 inches. You don't need it to be quite that wide if you don't want it to, but uh, or if your fabric isn't that wide, but mine is and it works just fine. And then I'm making it uh, 20 inches long for where I'm measuring it and just attempting to cut a straight line right here. So that way I can have a five gallon container. And I'm actually using a colored pencil to mark this out because I couldn't find my chalk. So, and I wasn't really sure if my chalk would really stick to it that well. And the colored pencil was right there and it worked pretty good. So I found out pretty quickly that this fabric actually cuts really nicely. I could just do a couple cuts and then slide it along just like wrapping paper. It was pretty great. I'm just folding in the top so that way I can create a top hem so that helps the bag stay open a little bit better. You can skip this step if you want to. I'm just doing it because I want to help the bag stay open better. I didn't pin the fabric because I wanted it to be easier and it was pretty easy just to fold it in. It wasn't perfect but it worked just fine. Now I'm putting in the two sides so that way I can sew a seam all along the side and on the bottom. The only thing about this fabric is that it is kind of stiff and so it doesn't move quite as easily and it was getting kind of caught up on things a little bit but it wasn't too bad. So just double back stitching of course so that way everything stays nice and secure and I am using a really more heavy duty kind of a thread that's for upholstery. Now I'm putting my hand in there so that way I can help stretch out the corners. This is the way that I normally do it instead of measuring, um, but I do measure to make sure that it's the correct width because I want it to be four and a half inches on either side of the seam and that way it will end up being nine inches across and that is half of the diameter of my 
bag. That way my bag will actually stand up straight and I'm going to do that on the other side as well. And now I just fold it all in and I got a bag that stands up. So you can see that inside they just barely touch. They actually don't even need to touch at all if you want to be a little wider at the bottom, but it just, not four and a half inches worked pretty well with this measurement. So I am measuring four and a half inches up and across, so that way I can get my line that this is where my line would be if I measured it. And I'm just drawing a line over the top part because I don't need the vertical line, I just need the horizontal one. And I'll show you how that works in a minute, but I'm just going to do that on both sides so that way my lines end up being perfect and the triangles on the inside of the bag are absolutely perfect the way that they're supposed to be. But honestly, I don't think that this project needs to be perfect and so I don't normally do it this way. It's just the perfectionist way, so if you want to make sure that your bags are exact, then you can do it this way. Or maybe for like your first time, it can be really helpful as well. Now I'm just folding that in, making sure that everything is nice and straight. And I want the outside of my line to go to the outside of the bag, but I want the other side to be the same width. So I want one half of the seam to be four and a half inches and the other half to be four and a half inches. That way it's nine inches, which is half of the diameter of my bag. So I meant to leave one of these to where I can show you actually uh, all my markings and things, but I thought that this was just so easy to do because so you're basically just sewing around doing all these straight lines. The most difficult part is um, this part, but it's just because you have to make a square basically, which I ended up not even making squares because I found it easier not to. Instead, I just made sure that I figured out where the line goes on the top because you don't really need the side line or the up and down line, you just need the horizontal line because that gives you this line here. And these turned out really great. I think that they're gonna work well for my husband at least, I hope so. Um, I don't know, I might try growing some things in them as well. So the bottom ends up being actually more like a, actually a square, but it looks round, you know, from the top of course, but this way it can fit into trays if you want to. My only concern about these is that we do live in a very dry climate and I don't know how well uh, landscaping fabric really performs as a grow bag or grow bags in general perform around here. I've never used one. My husband just really wants to try it. He's really gotten into gardening again this year since he has time now. These were really easy to make. I'm going to link in the description box below where I learned how to make these because there's a really good video. I only watched one on how to make, well I watched a couple other ones but they were boring and I just couldn't pay attention. So I'm going to link the one that I really liked down in the description box below. It's for a one gallon size bag and so for this five gallon, remember you need to make it uh, 20 inches like long. So just use, use the length of your fabric because it's like about 37 inches and that's going to be your width around and then you want it to be 20 inches tall like this way needs to be 20 inches and so you're just going to measure the 20 inches and cut that and that will give you your bag size and then this is going to end up being about 18 inches uh, so then you need that in half which is 9 inches and then in half again to get uh, your square which is four and a half inches. And then I kind of actually made my hem a little closer to nine and a half inches and that got it a little bit more right for me and to where you can't 
probably tell in this the lighting isn't bright enough but my triangles just barely touch inside the bag and that is perfect i've made a couple of them where the triangles overlap a little bit just experimenting and the bottom ended up smaller and i want the bottom to be nice and wide of course and so getting that measurement right is pretty important so you just want the line eventually to be nine inches because that's half of 18. so you have each triangle, the line is going to be nine inches. It was pretty darn easy. And if you guys give it a try, let me know in the comment section below and let me know your experiences with grow bags because I have no experience with them. So I'm very curious to see how well they work. So uh, let's go make my cushion cover. <laughs> to the cushions. The foam that I used was actually given to me by my aunt. It's a leftover foam from a project that she was doing and so I glued it all together with E6000 glue and it's been glued together for a few months so it's held up through the winter cold which I was very glad about but now I am stitching some batting onto it. I wanted to make sure that when I took the cover off and on it then everything would just still be together and I didn't have to worry about the batting moving anywhere. So I want to stitch it really good. The batting helps to mask where there's different pieces of foam. That way you can't really feel where there's a start of another piece of foam. And it worked out pretty well. It stitched fairly easily. I just did a really basic stitch on it, um, just pulling it around. Is it called a top stitch, I think? So I just did that all around the whole three sides that had any seams. And now I'm laying the fabric over it and just cutting around it, leaving enough space for a seam allowance. I just got this rotary cutter and I'm not very impressed with it. The blade sure dulled out pretty quickly. So if you have a brand that you really like of rotary cutters, please let me know because I'd like to try a different blade. So now I'm cutting the corners that way it'll be a box cover, a box cushion cover, and all my corners will be nice and squared off and so that way I can actually know where my corners are supposed to be. Kind of like a bed sheet sort of thing, you know? Anyways, now I am just stitching those up and you'll see in a minute I laid it over the top of my cushion to make sure everything fit on there perfectly and it did i was so glad and then i laid it on top of more drop cloth and then i cut around that 
just to get my measurements because I didn't really see the point in measuring. It was just easier to lay it on top. That way my fabric didn't move around a whole bunch. And I left a little bit of length towards the back so that way I could tuck it underneath my cushion. And then I just stitched it all together. I wanted to explain to you what I actually did because the footage that I got didn't really make a lot of sense. So instead of really showing you what I did, I'm just going to tell you because it might make more sense now that I've sewn it. So I wanted to make a box cushion cover, right? And usually those have a zipper on them. And also I'm making a really, really big one because this is a about, like it's as long as like a twin size bed basically and I mean I can lay on it and take a nap if I wanted to it's a very nice size but I wanted to make my own cushion for it and I never have done this before so what I did was I laid my foam down and then I put my fabric on top of it and then I put it down and I kind of tucked it under just a little bit and then I cut along all the way around all of it and then what I did was I made my my cuts that you do for a normal box cushion. I will link in the description box a couple of actual box cushion covers that make a little bit more sense that I was able to have some help with, but I didn't find anyone that did it the same way that I did for the opening. There is one lady that did an envelope fold but she did the opening on the bottom, but I wanted mine to be able to where I could flip it if I wanted to and use both sides in case one side was dirty and I want the other side to be clean before I wash the cover. So uh, I made my envelope fold along on the back and I'm going to either do some sort of a snap or um, some Velcro or something. I have to see what I have. I have those little ones, but I'm not sure if that will work super great for this kind of material. Um, cause I did use a drop cloth and that made it to where I actually have extra cover left over, which is good because now I can make my pillows for the back. And then for the back part, I made sure, so the drop cloth already has a hem on it and this is the back part. So for both sides of the back, I left it hemmed so that way it's already nice and strong still and I didn't have to do that extra work. So I made sure so the big drop cloths, they're sewn down the middle. And this is actually, I think, a medium sized drop cloth because it was like the $15 one instead of the $20 one, but it's a heavier weight, medium sized one, I believe. So the top part, there's the back side that's like this, and then all the corners have the cut in them sort of thing here um, on the top part. So that way I have my box. So because they're cut at like a little 90 degree angle sort of thing towards a little square and then you put those pieces together and you sew them up and then you get this. Like I said, I'll put in the description box someone else that can actually explain this to you better. But then, so this is the top part and it goes all the way down on all of it. And then the bottom part, it's just uh, the size of um, the foam itself there's no overhang to go around the sides it's just the bottom part except for the back which you can kind of see here so this this is the back i'll show it to you when i put it on the thing too but then the back part has this extra flap that tucks underneath it and so that way i can button things together i can either put buttons on this and then the button holes on this or i'll put snaps on them i kind of just want to do velcro though so i will see what i have but actually it fits in there pretty good it's just the only thing if this wasn't as long then I wouldn't even need to worry about any fasteners it's just that it's so long that this kind of tries to hang down out of it a little bit and it's not as tight as I wanted and I don't want like spiders trying to lay eggs in it because there are creepy crawlies outside and I don't want them getting into my cushion what I did though was I put all of this around my cushion inside out and then I pinned it all and then where all my pins were I stitched it with just like a loose hand stitch so that way I didn't have to worry about my pins falling out or poking me because the pins like to go through this drop cloth material a little bit and I wanted to be able to make sure that I could take this off and 
put it back on and stuff and adjust it if I needed to. And by putting in these stitches, I'll show you them. I have some white stitching here and then I have my regular stitching here. So this is my hemline basically. And then my foot of my uh, sewing machine was just right here for my needle, you know, and then so the needle came right here. So that way it's just my measurements and it was really easy. And what I did, another thing that I did, was I stitched it along so that way it fit on there, but then with my foot being where the stitch was, it made it to where it was a little bit smaller than actually my um, my cushion itself, kind of. So that way it was nice and tight. I didn't have any loose bunching parts. Also, one little thing that I found was helpful, around these corners, here let me find, here's an actual full corner. So around the full corners, it's a lot easier to sew it from this side, and so if I started out sewing it from this side where it's all flat, but where the corners are, I had to flip my fabric around and then do the corners on this side. And I kind of messed this one up a little bit for some weird reason, but it, like, I absolutely messed this up hardcore, like, bad, but it fits on my cushion just fine, and I can't even tell that I messed up. So this is a very forgiving project, and someone is stomping around upstairs. But this is a very forgiving project, and, uh, yeah, it was not as difficult as I thought. I was freaking out a little bit, because I was like, I'm gonna mess this up, and I can't go and just get new drop cloth anytime I want right now. Well, I guess I can, technically, but, because Lowe's is still open. But you know what I mean. I just did not want to mess this up, and in one spot, I did have to take out some of my stitches, because, like, where those corners are, it bunched up a little bit, and I didn't realize it. So you definitely have to make sure that this fabric stays nice and flat, but don't pull it too much, but pull it just enough because it's, I mean, it's a good heavy duty kind of fabric, but it's also not that heavy duty, you know what I mean? It's kind of loosey goosey and it tries to go places and it's a lot of fabric, so yeah. But this is actually a very beginner friendly project, I feel like, because it's not that difficult. If you have rudimentary basic sewing machine knowledge, then you can do this. So yeah. Um, let's go put this on the cushion and I will show you how it works. Now it's on there and it needs to be ironed, but since it has all this batting on it, then it's not like that's going to be a problem. I can just iron it right on here. So this is the part that goes around and it can tuck under if I really want it to, um, I guess. But this part comes up and under here. So this is actually the loose part, but I have to just tuck it under and it's hard to do one handed, but. There you go. And then I can add buttons or snaps or Velcro to keep this down. Yeah, it worked out pretty good, I think. But that's the cushion. And it goes on really easily. It comes off really easily. Um, just about as easy as a fitted sheet. So there you go. And also, it's not too terribly wrinkly. Not as bad as I thought it would be. It's kind of got itself unwrinkled a little bit, which is nice. I feel very accomplished. I have my couch almost done outside and now my husband just needs to clean up all of his junk he keeps putting things on the porch and messing up my beautiful porch so ooh, i also need to make a coffee table for outside we have a lot of extra lumber from different projects so i'm going to be using that and i'm just gonna make kind of a skinny like bench coffee table sort of thing to go in front of my couch but you're gonna have to wait for that in another video of course so uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a really great week. I'm going to go make a fairy house, so if you want to see how that turned out, 
Follow me on Instagram because I'll probably have my fairy house posted already. It's part of a, a like a group kind of art project that I'm doing um, with some friends and it's been really fun so far and this week we're building fairy houses. So I hope you have a really great week and I will talk to you later. Bye!